Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'm just going to be showing you some gameplay from the Children of Arrakis event. Typically, I would do live commentary while I'm actually playing the game, but the thing is, I suck when I do that. So I kind of figured may as well have some gameplay in the background while I'm also kind of discussing this and uh, just kind of showing you exactly how I played it. You know, how it is, because it's really, really cool event. It's their April Fool's event. This is the uh, Worm Thunder, so to speak. And uh, anyways, yeah, let's get into it. So pretty much this is just your typical game from April Fool's. I mean, it's obviously it's a different type of game, but this is actually very similar to last year, how we had the Future Thunder or whatever it was. And uh, so... What this is, is you have two different factions. You have the House of the Hawk, House of the Bull, and I've already actually kind of gotten into that in my description video for this event, so if you want, check that out, link below. But that said, there's pretty much going to be four different vehicles between the two that they both have access to. You have the QAD, which is basically a light tank, CTT, which is a regular main battle tank, the R Lao, which is an MLRS launcher, and the Topter, which is a helicopter. Then you have the House of the Hawk that has the Sonic, which is a very well-armored, uh, really, really powerful tank. And then you have the DOTR, which is a twin-gun 180mm cannon firing, just nasty tank that belongs to the House of the Bull. Anyways, so let's just kind of get into the MLRS launcher. And this is something that I personally haven't had a ton of success with thus far in game, but... It's interesting because, historically speaking, War Thunders used the April Fool's event in order to test out new game modes or game functions, anything relating to the game, right? So, there's a lot of the time, I mean, it's pretty on the nose, like they actually had Silent Thunder one year where you could uh, be in a submarine, and obviously, I think that they're going to be adding submarines somewhere in the future. There was one time years ago where they had helicopters for the first time, I think that they had the T-90 where, like they said, it was like a tier 12 vehicle, things of that nature. And so I think that the r Lao might be some sort of a very primitive artillery-based system. I mean, of course, we already have MLRS in a way. We have the Calliope, we have the M26 T-99, if I'm not mistaken, a few Russian vehicles, uh, and also maybe like a German vehicle or two. And so, it's not like it's not already in the game, but we don't really have anything refined. They're just kind of like one-off efforts. And I feel like this would be a legitimate way to actually kind of maybe start integrating artillery-based vehicles in the game. I mean, we have the band cannon Valgen, or whatever it is, that just came out for the Swedish about a patch or two, which is literally, if I'm not mistaken, an artillery piece that they added to War Thunder. I mean, there are several vehicles that are designed as artillery pieces in War Thunder and are meant for direct fire, but they are in a direct fire role. So it'll be interesting to see if they end up turning this into something that we have access to in the future where it's like, hey, man, you can use that vehicle as a direct or indirect fire. And to a point, I mean, it's not like we're aiming from like 20 kilometers away. I mean, the Arlau... At most, you're like firing from two kilometers away, but it's an interesting thought because that more than any other vehicle in this kind of has a very unique implication to it. Uh, the DOTR also kind of does in a way because, I mean, it blows up and it creates a nuclear explosion, but I think that that's just kind of meant to be cool. Um, also, in this game mode, it's really, really cool. You see the Dune Worm. It's just a really, really nasty worm. And pretty much the way that you can tell where it is or where it's going is there's this giant red circle on the map. And it just kind of gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it locks onto a single point. And then the Dune Worm comes out and boom, whoever's there is dead, right? And so this Dune Worm is attracted by speed and autocannons. So you actually, or not autocannons, but just firing. So you see a lot of the time where the, the smaller, the, the Dune Buggy looking things, the, uh, what was that, the AQD or QAD, I mean to say, those attract it very well because, I mean, they move really fast, they fire their cannons. You see a lot of those things dying to the Dune Worm. It's a really cool sight seeing this thing coming up out of the, the sands and just absolutely annihilating people. I've not been killed by it yet, but it's a really, really cool thing. It's huge, and I think War Thunder, again, Gaijin, you did a great job. I mean, it looks really cool. Back in the day, these War Thunder events were a bit more silly. I remember years ago, like, they had the walkers, they had the potato tanks, they had, you know, things... Actually, I think that might have been in the same uh, April Fool's, but 
you know, they've had some really silly things. This seems more like it's... Um, I wonder if they were paid by, by the makers of Dune to do this. Um, probably not. I mean, they're probably just piggybacking off the popularity of Dune. But it's, it's interesting to think because... I mean, this is a very... I mean, how the vehicles are designed is very similar to the future Thunder, whatever it was, again, last year, where you had the invisible tanks and things of that nature. It's just a very weird thing. And also, the, it's just sand map. So there's not really too much to it, but it, it is a new map. I mean, previous War Thunder April Fool's events were in pre-made maps, maps that were actually already in the game, and they just kind of put vehicles in them, new vehicles. So... I mean, either way, Gaijin's still doing something really cool here. For all we know, this might end up being a map in the future. Uh, that's what happened with last year's event, where the uh, map that was in it became a map that was in the game. And now, I don't know if this is going to be a map in War Thunder at any point in the future, but I would be interested to see. I mean, one other interesting thing here is with the top tier. So, a lot of the time, you know, right now in War Thunder, we only have traditional helicopters, right? So, you have the rotor blade in the back, you have the one up top, and that's pretty much it. I'd be interested because the top tier reminds me very, very much. I think it was of the Comanche. If, that, if I'm not mistaken, that was a compound helicopter. Compound helicopters are pretty much helicopters with a blade that is meant to propel you forward. And they're supposed to be extremely fast. And that is exactly what the top tier is. And it looks like a compound helicopter as well. So, who knows? I mean, of course, this has wings, like, you know, flappy wings. Whereas compound helicopters don't. But, I mean, it's the same general profile. So, I'd be interested to see if this is also going to be trying to bring compound helicopters into the game. Because I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. I mean, it looks like it. And it's really, really fast like I would expect a compound helicopter to be. So, who knows? I mean, who knows? This this really has a lot of possibilities for it. My apologies. I meant to say the AH-56 Cheyenne. So, it's not the, not the Comanche. The Comanche was actually a stealth helicopter, but I was actually thinking that this does look like the Comanche, except that it kind of moves like a, a compound helicopter in a way. Anyways, Tell me what you guys think about this in the comments below. Like I said, I typically I would like to do some sort of in-game commentary while I'm actually playing, but I'm not just in plays, I'm not oddballs, I'm not fly. I get really, really distracted very, very easily, and it's just not really my forte to do that because if I were to make gameplay in-game where I just commentated, then I would probably only have about one out of every five of my matches are recordable and able to be put online. So it's not really acceptable. <laughs> it's really... I, I play way worse whenever I'm distracted or trying to talk to people. Anyways, again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear your opinions on this event, what it means for the future of War Thunder. If they're using this as a testing ground for some sort of new technology in-game. I personally think they are, but more or less in an offhand kind of way. I mean, this isn't like a very on-the-nose thing. It's not really direct, but who knows? You know, I mean, they, they might be using this as some sort of a, a testing ground again for MLRS and possibly, although it's a stretch, compound helicopters. Again, just based on how the top tier moves, but again, who knows? But either way, thanks again for watching, everyone. Please like, comment, subscribe. You guys know the dealio, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.